Hey everybody. Here we have a very special looking power supply. My uncle brought this power supply to me not long ago when he came up here to stay for a little bit and left it here for me to look at and get my um, give my opinions on. Which I already did, but I figured I'd make a video about this unit too. It's my first time seeing one of these power supplies in person. This is a Logosis power supply, acrylic power supply. Here is the spec label. Gonna give the best focus for you. Pause the view specs. Anyways, we're going to have a look here. This power supply is based on an old design, has a minus 5 volt rail. It has a lot of its power on the plus 5 volt rail. And normally when it comes to Logosis, I highly advise you stay away from them because their power supplies, most of them anyway, are very, very poor quality. This one here is much better though. And of course it's very hard to find completely acrylic power supplies like this. And I'm very happy to make actually make a video about one of these. So anyways, if you've, if you've been curious about the quality of this power supply, because of course, when you look on like Zoxide or Newegg, whatever, at this power supply, you can't really see it up close and personal to see how the quality unit is. And this power supply is rated for 550 watts. Of course, that says max output power. It's probably peak. <clears throat> Anyways, um... I'm going to give you my opinions on this power supply. Well, first let's go ahead and look at the connections available. We have a 20 plus 4 pin main ATX connector, which all the connectors are sleeved with this UV tubing, and all the connectors are green. This power supply would get an A plus for aesthetics, I tell you that. Here's a PCI Express connection for video cards. Two set of connections here. We have a P4 connection, it's only a 4 pin. Now keep in mind this power supply was manufactured in 2006. So 8 pin really wasn't on the market just yet. Or at least I don't remember anyway. And we have, on this strand we have 3 Molex connections. And on this strand we have 3 more Molex connections. And of course there's also a floppy disk connection on both of those strands. So we have 2 SATA connections. Six Molex, four pin connections, two floppies, a PCI Express six pin, and our 24 pin ATX connector. Let's go and have a look here. I want to show you guys something. Turn these lights on the side of my case. What I'm going to do is I'm going to stick the power supply up next to my case and see if the UV tubing lights up. It looks pretty cool. Okay, here we're looking at the Q Computer Mid Tower Deluxe. I'm going to cut out the lights, make it good and dark in here. I'm going to show up my monitors too, make it perfectly dark in here with the exception of the computer's cold cathode lights. Let's have a look here. Power supply has a bunch of wires on it, but have a look at this. Kind of hard to do this with one hand. Kind of hard to tell in the video, but all this stuff does light up a little bit and get closer up to the system. The closer it gets to those cold cathode lights, the better it lights up. It looks pretty cool. Anyways, now I'll go ahead and have a look at the um, internals. And the thing about the power, this power supply is seeing that it's acrylic and see-through, I don't really even have to take the cover off to have a look inside. We can just look through the case. Okay, let's go have a close look at this thing in, t in terms of what's inside. I like other Logos' power supply. This one here is actually built pretty well. Though it's not the best. It could be better, but it's, it's a big difference compared to their cheap power supplies. The PCB is good quality. Good thick PCB. Like what you would find, let's say, what's in the DynaPower USA um, Cherry Red 500 watt power supplies I have. Good thick PCBs. Better than the really thin paper-based PCBs. 
these I think have more fiberglass in them. I'm not exactly sure though. The thing about having a power supply in a case like this, acrylic case, is in your standard power supply the case is metal and that acts as a ground. Engineers with these power supplies they do things a little bit differently. You have to have separate wires for each screw hole. And of course on a computer power supply it's very important that you ground the front two um, spots because on the left side, well depending on how you look at it, you have your EMI filtering components on that where your AC comes in. You have you have your AC choke, which is um, has two coils, one for live, one for neutral. You have two Y capacitors, the next capacitor, and those um, X capacitors. I mean, no, excuse me, the Y capacitors, the blue caps. Those are connected to ground. The X capacitors are connected between live and neutral in your AC, and those. Those Y capacitors are pretty much useless if there's no ground there. So what they did is they hooked a ground wire to that screw and run it over to the plug. And on the other side, they did the same thing. So that way, the every important component here is grounded. But there's still one issue here in terms of grounding. As I mentioned earlier, regular power supply's casing is metal and that acts as a path of ground. They don't have any leads hooked to any of these screw holes, these um, where your screws from your case go in. So it turns out uh, with this power supply, your computer is really just a floating ground. Because on your computer's power supply, the metal is of course screwed up to the metal of your case, which your motherboard and stuff are grounded to. The screw holes on the motherboard are grounded to those components. And without your power supply using um, being a path to ground for your casing, it's not particularly good for the rest of the components. In terms of the actual board, I mentioned earlier that it's decent quality. The capacitors are a mixture of Asia X and something else. Probably not the best brand in the world, but I never had problems with them. I actually recapped the power supply using harvested Asia X capacitors, and that power supply has worked fine for quite a while. And, um, to jump closer to the light here. I'm going to grab my flashlight. Okay, I've actually got the flashlight sitting on top of the case, so we can look inside. Here's a look at our secondary side. This power supply does have a fan controller, and we have additional EMI filtering components here. So this power supply has all the filtering components needed, but there's still one issue. Let me go around to the primary side. This power supply does not have MOVs, so you definitely want to have this connect to a very good surge protector. The bridge rectifier, I believe, is a 6 amp. I'm not exactly sure. It is a KBU606, and this guessing by the model is a 6 amp. Looks pretty beefy, so it's probably a 6 amp bridge rectifier. We have 680 microfarad capacitors, not sure of the brand. I see LP on there. I guess the brand is LP. Of course, being logs, it's kind of expected for them to use unknown brand components. The heat sinks are decent sized. And we'll go ahead and spin this around to the back so you can see inside. I gotta be careful with this thing, I don't want to scratch it up too much. Anyways, you can have a look in the back there, you can see the transformer. The main transformer is pretty decent sized. It's actually not that bad quality, but. I'm very well sure this is not a 550 watt. It's probably a 300 watt unit at best. You could probably get 300 watts out of this, and of course, it uses an older design, having that minus 5 volt rail. Modern day power supplies don't have a minus 5 volt rail, and of course, this power supply is very 5 volt heavy. That's not going to be very good for your video card that you're trying to power with this. Anyway, it was a continue looking here. <clears throat> Overall, it's not a very bad looking power supply. And here, just a minute, I'll go ahead and plug it up and have a look at the fans. Why not? We're going to have a look in here through the fan. So you can see inside. If this was my power supply, I would open it up, but seeing as my uncle's power supply, I'm not going to. 
unless there was really something wrong with it which I don't see anything wrong with that I don't, all the capacitors look good everything's good in this power supply so I'm going to go ahead and plug it up and and see how the fans look it should have LED fans not sure what color I think they're blue LED fans so I'll go ahead and plug this thing up and have a look at it running okay I got this power supply plugged up and running there's how the fans look both fans are LED and of course as I mentioned it's fan the fans are controlled the rear fan seems to run at full speed the intake fan seems to be controlled it's not running wide open so the power supply is very quiet now let me go ahead and shut off these extra fans here I got eight fans on my radiator only four have to run unless I'm doing something intensive and it's hot in here but anyways I'm going to have a close up listen to the fans. Now of course my computer's still running but it's not making a lot of noise now. Overall, not bad in terms of aesthetics. And to finalize this video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and plug up my multimeter and check our rails. Now of course there's no load on the rails. And when you get load when you get your uh, rails on the power supply loaded, the voltages of course will change. But at no load I'm gonna actually test to see how the rails are doing. The multimeter here. And see I don't have a I don't like to have a power supply tester on me so Got this multimeter set to 20 volts on the DC volt side. Connect um, the black wire to a ground lead. And we'll go ahead and test our 12 volts. And you have 12 volt, 5 volt, 3.3 volt, 5 volt standby, minus 5 volt, and minus 12 volt. Yeah, this thing, like I mentioned, it has a minus 5 volt rail. We'll see how it does too. Make sure you can see that you can. Good. Get a good focus here. Go ahead and check our rails here. I'm going to go ahead and do, let's see, I'm going to go ahead and do 12 volts. 12.05, 5 volt, 5.21, and grab the main ATX connector. Check the 3.3, and it is doing 3.42, a little bit on the high side, but power supply is not loaded. Minus 12, minus 11.28, something like that. And of course, I'm going check the 5 volt standby. Well, actually, no, we're going to do the minus 5 volt. And that minus 5 volt power, <laughs> minus 5 volt rail is indeed working. Even though the modern day computer doesn't even need it. I'm going to test the 5 volt standby. And of course, this is under running conditions. The 5 volt standby is a little bit different in terms of testing. 5.19. I'm going to go ahead and shut off the power supply unit. Still at 5.19. I'm going to turn off power to the unit. It'll take a few seconds because the caps still got to discharge. Those 680 microfarad caps will take a little while to discharge. <clears throat> okay, it's fully discharged. We're going to see if this power supply has a 5 volt standby rail spike. Commonly, power supplies that are two transistor. Um, regulated on terms of 5 volt standby power may have a spike but ones that are IC regulated should be fine we're getting 5.19 so the 5 volt standby rail on this unit is well regulated that's good to see if you'll see a very poorly regulated 5 volt standby rail 
Go check out my Best Tech ATX 250-12E video. It is titled as 12 volts on the 5 volt standby rail on a Best Tech ATX 250-12E power supply. It's on my channel somewhere. I think I uploaded it in 2011. So for, feel free to check that out. Anyways, this concludes my little video review of this power supply. Now, of course, if you want to see a very real review of power supply, you have to go check out something like Johnny Guru or something because I don't have the equipment to t actually load test a power supply. Basically, what I do is I just do a little overview of components and that kind of stuff. So my power supply videos aren't true reviews; they're just like overviews. So, anyways, any questions or comments? Feel free to ask, and thanks for watching.